I get evaluated every day from you guys. So <laughs> That's part of our job here. Welcome to the Red and Blue Review. And fortunately, most of the times when you evaluate us, it's been a passing grade because of these two guys. Say hello to Daryl Bird of the Cat's Paws, covering life on Planet Blue. And are you going to say something nice about Planet Red finally? I, I am. Come on. I am going to say something nice about, well, not current Planet Red, of course. Oh, of course. Yeah. Old Planet Red. <laughs> the statue. I'm paying tribute to the statue. Everybody knows that Drew Brees broke Johnny Unitas' record. Yep. Not that big a deal in modern day, but what a testimony to what Johnny Unitas did years and years ago in the NFL. Touchdown pass in 47 consecutive games. Did it in high tops and a crew cut. Yep. That's hard to do. He was, he was so good. <laughs> I wore high top uh, football cleats when I was playing because of Johnny Unitas. Yeah, yeah, he was the man. Here's the man on Planet Red, uh, Howie Lindsay, with uh, Hosanna's, of course, toward Planet Blue. Absolutely. The best college football game on television. Is it on television? This weekend <laughs> is Kentucky not, versus not Arkansas. <laughs> Can you believe that Kentucky and Arkansas are this bad together? I mean, it's a sorority slap fight. Whoever wins, <laughs> it's, oh, this is going to be a mess. Now, honestly, we can't believe Kentucky's this, but Arkansas is historically oh. gagging on themselves. And they were a top 10 team. Yeah. I remember vividly John L. Smith saying, if we're not in the contention for a national title, you know, it's my fault. Yikes. It's his, I guess that it's is, his fault. That is his fault. I mean, th that game is so incredibly <laughs> bad. It's and we're going to discuss it for the next 30 minutes, starting with our game time storylines. This portion of the Red and Blue Review brought to you by the Kentucky Office of Highway Safety. My kids warn me all the time, Dad, don't text when you drive, and we make the same challenge to you. One text or call could wreck it all. Well, the uh, football future, or at least the immediate portion of it for Patrick Tolls, got wrecked the other night in that game against Mississippi State. Tore up his ankle a little bit, not sure when he's going to be back. A high ankle sprain is a high ankle sprain is a high ankle sprain, and it, again, we all heal differently, you know. You know, then again, he doesn't have to move as uh, as far as, or as fast as a as a tailback or a receiver. So, who knows what? Uh, and you know, some guys' uh, uh, pain tolerance is different than others. Uh, so, you know, we, we'll we'll take a look at it. If he's unable to return, yes, he could get. We could apply for a medical um, hardship. It's uh, something that we have to discuss with with he, his family, and our, our compliance, just to make sure. Uh, everything's in order, and, and, and I have talked to him, told him we'll do what's best for, for him first, um, and, and that's what we need to do. That's what we're about. I hadn't really thought about, <clears throat> excuse me, I was watching this. That's a testimony to the situation of UK's football program when a freshman who came off his red shirt, played only a couple of series, gets his ankle hurt, and that's the biggest news going on. Yeah. Because you're down to one freshman, true freshman quarterback who's completing less than 50% of his passes, who's taking off and running way too often, and Patrick nice. Toles is in deep trouble. High ankle sprain, a couple of things. Joker said pain tolerance level. I suspect his is off the charts. That is one <laughs> tough yeah. kid. The downside I see to it is that it's the right ankle. He talked about how he had hurt his left ankle a mm -hmm. lot. This is his right ankle. Yes, he doesn't have to move around a ton, but he's got to plant and be able to throw off that ankle, and those things are really tough to come back from. And we're, say, what, six games in, mm -hmm. halfway through? Uh, I don't know if you risk it at this point. Just see how he handles it a couple couple of weeks in. Guys, I want to discuss one of the things that, that Joker says <coughs> in that bite is he wants to do what's best for the player. Mm -hmm. Now, Daryl, you and I talked to Patrick after the game mm -hmm. when he got hurt. This kid has a passion. He wants to play. Kentucky's playing for nothing at this point. So if that is the case, what is best for him? Is it for him to just take a medical red shirt and have four years left, or does he follow his passion? If he's well enough, you stick him out there and let him play, and what's going to be a – historically bad UK football season. I think you have to give it a couple of weeks. Just let it right if he's mm -hmm. not, you don't have to make the decision right now. It's there if you if you don't come back you can apply for it. If he heals quickly, he's got four or five four games left, possibly let him go. But if it lingers beyond that, yeah. No, I wouldn't burn that ear. I'd How do we you, think? I would I would get him healthy this week as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Next week, starting next week, I would put him in the <coughs> shotgun and roll the rest of the season. Shotgun, you don't have to do that four, three and five step mm -hmm. drop. You don't have to do the planting. You don't have to do nearly as much. You got a running back sitting right here next to you if you're going to hand off. I'd put him in the shotgun and roll the rest of the way. I tell you, one of the things I picked up from talking to Patrick after the game was even though he walked into that interview room, he was hobbled, that kid was in control. He was mm -hmm. an 18-year-old, yeah. extremely mature. You can tell he's been around Senator Bunning. He's been around some people. He's not intimidated at all by the media uh, crush. He's a big kid. and. Uh, 
Howie, this kid just wants to play. You could hear it in his voice. He wants to play football. And my concern would be if I'm Kentucky is if you set him out, he may look, you know, I don't know if he'd transfer or not, Daryl, but yeah. this kid wants to get on the field. <clears throat> I don't think he would. And he's, hopefully he's smart enough to realize that when he tests the ankle and mm -hmm. it's not there that he can't, can't do what he needs to do. Mm -hmm. And then you, you can show him that, son, you're, you just cannot do the things you are good at. Let's not do it. But, yeah, he'll, he, if there's a way to get back, he'll figure it out. Well, we go from nearly a broken ankle to the Cards <clears throat> trying to break a streak. They've not bit, beat Pittsburgh since 207, and Charlie Strong and Jake Smith want to stop the streak this weekend. It has. You look at our first year here, we go up there and we lose, what, 21 to 3 or whatever, 20 something to 3, and then last year we get beat. But we, we got to know what we're up against, and we have to make sure that when we go in as a football team, that we have to be prepared to go play that game, and we haven't been as locked in with that game. And we, we just have to prepare and come out. We can't come out flat like we did last year against Pitt, but we, uh, we just have to come out and we have to play our hardest. Louisville's current all-conference quarterback was not even a quarterback the last time that Louisville beat Pittsburgh. He was a <laughs> sophomore in high school, Teddy Bridgewater was, and he was playing safety and wide receiver. He had not even made the switch yet. That's how long ago it has been, uh, 1,813 days, if anybody's counting. That is a long time to be losing to the same team over and over and over again. You, you may not find any sympathy on this side of the room after 26 <laughs> straight years of losing to Florida. <laughs> that is a good point. We're not quite at the Florida-Tennessee <laughs> yeah. streak level. Uh, but, I mean, I think for Louisville, this is a really long streak. It's the longest losing streak they've got, uh, and they want to uh, banish that this yeah. weekend. Well, once upon a time, as you may remember, back in August and early September, Kentucky had a passing offense, but that's been tossed out the window as the injuries piled up for the wounded walking Wildcats. Again, we went into the season after the first two games, of, you know, thinking we had a chance to be pretty good offensively with the way our quarterback was playing, our receivers were playing really well. Uh, we thought that our, our running game was, you know, um, you know, we had ran the ball with our tailback running game. It was averaging about five yards a carry. Uh, so we felt pretty good about our, our offense. And uh, now, um, you know, we've had to change a, a lot of what we were, had, had done in the off offseason um, you know, with the way we were playing. We're still trying to play with the, the, with the tempo, but you're not seeing a lot of the same formations. Um, you're not seeing as, as much of the same routes that we saw early. So we've had to change a lot, but... That's the game, um, you know, um, you know, and, uh, you know we, we accept the challenge. We got a veteran staff that, you know, understands how creative we have to be um, to, to get this thing. Yeah, that passing game was really good. It was over 300 yards per game early on with Maxwell Smith, and that's, that's the dilemma they are in. I, mean, I like Jalen Whitlow as an athlete. I like him running the Wildcat. If he's your quarterback the rest of the way, you're going to be hard-pressed to win a single game because yeah. this offense is built for the passing game. The problem, Maxwell Smith, has now he's got the, the ankle problem. He hurt his shoulder. He hurt his shoulder last year. He hurt the same shoulder in high school. He's been hurt the last three years he's tried to compete. So that, to me, points everything in Patrick Toll's direction. He's your quarterback for the next four years. You've got to get him healthy. Now, whether it's for the end of this year or on four years into next season, I don't know. But going forward, I think a whole lot of you know, what Joker's future may depend on how they do the rest of the year. You've got to pin it on Jalen Whitlow, and that, that's just not going to work. You're not going to get enough points on the yeah. board. No way. I think the most he can get you is 10 to 14 unless yep. the defense comes through and uh, maybe some special teams. Well, Louisville has a kickoff at 11 a.m. this weekend. Now, that may not sound all that early unless you're one of the players who could be expecting a 5 a.m. wake-up call. With the game starting at 11 o'clock, it's, it's going to be an early rise. So we get up early, and this time when you get up, you don't have much time at all. It's time to go play the football game, which is good. I, I like that. I like getting up. I think that the game's at 11, so you eat at 7.30. We usually do a little meeting before, so we'll get up probably around 6 o'clock, 6.15. We'll do a walk. We'll have a walkthrough. We'll do a kick and walk through, then go change, get ready, eat our breakfast, and it's time to go play the, pre the game. A 5 a.m. wake-up call is no big deal to Charlie Strong. He wakes up at 5 in the morning and runs to the river and back uh, each, each morning down there at the football complex. Now, for the players, a little different story. That's that, a long run, Howie. <laughs> that is a long run. Wow. And, and uh, sometimes he takes a player with him. But uh, I think for the players, a 5 a.m. wake-up call is what they did during, you know, like mat drills during mm -hmm. the spring. They can do it. You know, it, it, it's all about, you know, tricking that body clock into thinking it's 3.30 in the afternoon. Now, and, how, uh, yeah, it, it's going to be difficult. How is going to Pittsburgh? Are you getting up at 5? No. 
I, I am. Uh, <laughs> he, he won't make eleven. <laughs> absolutely. They have breakfast in the hotel. I bet. I won't see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Daryl brought up just a moment ago the uh, tricky issues facing Kentucky. All these players dropping. Joker was asked, "Is it fair to access and access his record this year?" Uh, based on the fact that he's having to do it with uh, a banged up bunch of Wildcats. And I don't have time to, 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 to think about or, or, or you know, evaluate myself. I don't have time for that. I just, one thing we have to do is evaluate um, what we're doing football-wise and try to put a product on the field that, uh, and get ready, get prepared, and put a product on the field that uh, has a chance to win a game against Arkansas. I mean, it's a legitimate question. Can you fairly evaluate the job any employee that you have has done during the year when so many things have gone wrong against him that were beyond his control. And I don't know. I got a feeling, personally, his job status is going to be on these last six games going forward. The Arkansas game forward, not necessarily wins and losses, but are we seeing dramatic improvement? Are those young guys getting noticeably better and better and better as they continue to play more and more? Is the team still rallying that they're not going to lay down on the coach, but it, should it ever happen, game over. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the end of it right there. That's a whole lot of it because the attendance, it's been below 50,000 the last three home games, and that's not going to change a lot, I don't believe. So you're going to have to base on how much are they growing, and is it enough to go to your fan base and say he's coming back for one more year? A Wildcat weakness must become a strength if Kentucky's going to win at Arkansas. We'll talk about that as we head to the break. Daryl's going to tell us about the basketball yearbook. Absolutely. It's basketball season. It's been a half, hour, <laughs> half the show talking about football. Actually, the, our basketball yearbook is out just in time for Big Blue Madness, which comes up Friday night, 368 pages. We have interviews and stories with all 14 players on the roster. Big Q&A with Coach Calipari. You can order easily online at shopcatspaws.com. Have you driven a Ford lately? Well, check out Allstate Ford's pre-owned inventory at AllstateTrucks.com. Large selection of pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. Also, a nice selection of Ford certified pre-owned vehicles. Allstate Ford, on the Watterson at Poplar Level Road. Buying your next VW from Bach and Volkswagen will be a great experience. No games or gimmicks, competitive prices, and a huge inventory make number one Bachman the place to get your Volkswagen. The all-new 2012 Jetta, an IHS top safety pick, is a great vehicle and fun to drive. Or get the sporty all-new 2012 Volkswagen Beetle. It's back and better than ever. Come to number one Bachman Volkswagen today to get your new Volkswagen before someone else does. at Sam Swope Auto Group. When you service a vehicle at any Sam Swope dealership, you automatically become a Service VIP Rewards member. You get member pricing on parts and service, lost key return, and emergency roadside assistance. Plus, you can earn points that qualify you for discounts on your next vehicle purchase, up to $2,500. The best part is becoming a member is free. Become a member today at any Sam Swope dealership. Nobody walks away because everybody saves. Allstate Ford, seven-time recipient of Ford Motor Company's President's Award for customer satisfaction with 13 Ford certified service technicians and a best-in-class parts department. Business or personal, we are the truck experts. Allstate Ford, on the Watterson at Poplar Level Road. Next guy up. I mean, nothing that goes to my mind. I mean, it's, it's just part of the game. Um, it's going to happen. I'm not one of those war is me guys. I'm, you know, we, I just, we expect the next guy to, to, to come up and, and uh, play, play good football for us. 
Next guy up and next team up for Kentucky is Arkansas, and I think we could all see this coming. Arkansas plays terribly all year, then Kentucky pops up on the schedule, and Arkansas gets its biggest win so far under John L. when they knocked off Auburn. We got another opportunity going into a, a hostile environment, a um, team that's uh, playing really well offensively, the second in the league, and and passing at 300 yards per game, have scored 11 touchdowns passing. Uh, the fifth t in total offense of 409 yards. Got one of the t nation's top passers in Tyler Wilson. Uh, one top receivers in our conference, Kobe Hamilton, who's leading the league in receiving yardage. This is so Kentucky football. <laughs> Arkansas started the year <clears throat> preseason top 10. Talked that they could compete for the national title. It'd be a very high bowl game. Quarterback gets hurt. Quarterback's due to come back just about the time Kentucky rolls into town. He got back a little earlier than that. What a passing attack going against the UK secondary that's almost entirely true freshmen now. They've had so many injuries. They're down to six, maybe seven people who can even play in the secondary who are not injured. So that passing attack is going to come at them full force. What a, what a lesson. What a day of growing. Yeah. Hopefully, for UK sake, not growing pains too much, but what a test for that secondary. And that is probably the most, uh, <clears throat> perhaps the most underperforming team in college football. When you look at, they yep. began the season with two Heisman Trophy candidates, mm -hmm. yep. eight or nine ranked in the nation. They got some cleaning up they want to do, and Kentucky be the great opponent to do it against. Yeah, to get, for Arkansas to get on a roll, take yeah. out Auburn and Kentucky, and then mm -hmm. move forward from there, yeah, it'd be huge for them. It's kind of hard to figure out who this Pittsburgh team is. Uh, they've had a kind of a similar history. They started the season with two straight losses, picked up a couple of wins, and then they've lost again. So they've lost three of their first five games. That's despite having the best quarterback and one of the best running backs in the Big East. Well, you watch them early in the season. It's, I think any time you have a coaching change, kind of like where we were a few years ago, you're just really trying to find your team. And, and then you look at what they try to do just offensively. Uh, now I think they really sunk in and what they really want to do is trying to run the football with the back that they have with the quarterback, play action, get the ball down the field. But you watch them against Virginia Tech, scored a lot of points, moved the ball fairly well. And then you watch the Syracuse game, had a chance to go win that football game. They had their opportunities and just didn't take advantage of it. You know, Pittsburgh's such an interesting case. They've got talent. They've got mm -hmm. offensive linemen that are very good. They've got a, a pretty decent quarterback who their fans absolutely hate, by the way. Um, <laughs> and and, uh, and Ray Graham in the backfield, uh, who's just kind of coming along. So they, they've got some really good players there. Um, the, the question is, why have they had Louisville's number? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been four years in a row. Pitt, Pittsburgh has not been that good. Granted, Louisville went through the Crackthorpe years, but still... How in the world has this Pittsburgh team beat Louisville four times in a row, and now you're at their home place, they are desperate for a win, um, and this will be one of their only chances to beat a top 25 team this year. So it's dangerous. I think Louisville should win this. Mm -hmm. I think they should. But whatever Pittsburgh's got over Louisville, I don't know. Howie, I think this is going to be the week that Charlie Strong's defense finally raises its hand and says the buck stops here. I think this is the weekend because they have such an offensive challenge, potentially. Right. I think they're going to be sharp, and I think they're going to be tough against Pittsburgh. They're finally playing against an offense that runs the three- to five-step drop, that runs a traditional set. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. That, that could be a big key. Well, the big number for Kentucky coming up this weekend, it used to be 13 was the unlucky number. Now it's 14. The Cats, because of all the injuries, have now played 14 true freshmen. And there's going to be mistakes made when you play in guys that are, uh, are freshmen and are playing for the first time. You know, uh, we played two more freshmen last uh, this past week, a total of 14. Uh, but if you look across, you know, uh, all of them making plays. And you see our punt team go out, our punt return team, uh, who's who's one of the probably been one of the, the bright spots of our special teams. Our special teams have been solid, but you look at the punt return team. Um, this week there will be um, ten freshmen, ten freshmen on the on the punt return team, uh, and the sophomore will be doing the returning. So uh, you can't help but get excited about watching those guys. Doesn't that pretty much say it all? Mm -hmm. The punt team. Assuming Arkansas ever has to punt, <laughs> when they do, it's going to be ten freshmen up there trying to protect the sophomore who's trying to return the kick. That's just, that ought to work fine. Oh, that ought to. I know it, the special teams is where you try to get a lot of your young guys some reps and get them into the game, but good grief, 10 people. That's how much injuries have devastated what is this Kentucky team and how many true, people, true freshmen they've had to play and stick out there. But, man, you just, you're asking for it when you're in a situation like this. But they really, at this point, they have no choice in the matter.
Number crunching for the cards. The big number this week is 1-6. The cards are 1-6 in their last seven Big East openers, and they are the last team in the Big East to play a conference game this season. Well, what is happening, we haven't had a chance to go play no conference games yet, but we're uh, ranked uh, fairly high in the polls. And you look at Rutgers is 2-0 right now in the conference. Cincinnati is 1-0 in the conference, but you have three teams that are undefeated. So as we prepare to go down that road, we have to know this, that we have to be prepared and get ready to go play. Here's the, here's the weird thing. You know, every coach I've ever been around, ever covered, ever whatever, Starts right at the beginning of conference season. Okay, now the real season starts. We've yep. all heard it. Now the real season starts. Now every game counts from here on out. It's a one-game season from here on out. And Louisville's one and six. Mm -hmm. Even with all that talk, even with you know those coaches preaching to these players, this is the real important part of the season. And then you're one and six in conference openers. That's a very scary stat for Louisville. That tells me... Uh, one, that they just weren't prepared in previous, kind of, mm -hmm. in previous years. The other thing it tells me is that the players just either weren't listening or didn't prepare themselves effectively. Or the other fact in, in the, over those years, they just weren't very good. <laughs> That's true. <You> know? <laughs> That's true. There were some years yeah. where they went to Cincinnati and really had no, yeah. no real shot of winning. Well, playing the old if-in game, uh, Daryl says Kentucky can win this weekend at Arkansas if somehow they can find a passing attack. And getting the ball out of his hands quicker. I mean, again, decisions. He has to make decisions a lot quicker. I mean, just is he open? Is he open? No, let's go. Go. Run it. Throw it. Get it out of your hands. Let's get, not get ourselves in the amount of charge plays. A lot of guys don't have a lot of catches since uh, the Smith guy. Going I mean, we were, we were throwing for 320-something yards and top, one of the top in the league uh, after three games. And uh, now I think we're – Near the bottom, about 214 now. Let that number resonate. They're, they have 214 yards passing per game since the injury to Max Smith and Jalen Willow. He cannot do it all. He's got so many weapons at receiver he cannot or will not take advantage of because he's, he's running way too early. He's got to figure it out. He's got to play like he did in the first half against South Carolina to give UK any chance at all pulling off an upset at Arkansas. Howie says that uh, Louisville can win at Pitt if the Cards prove to be the tougher team in Arkansas. This is such a conventional offense, and, and the, the thing about this offense is they line up and they say, here we are, so it's more of you're going to line up and we're just going to run right at you. So now can you stop us? Are you good enough to, to go and tackle this running back and get him down? So, it, so there is no spread now. It's just you know put our hand in the dirt and just come right off and hit you in the mouth. I like that. This pit is, like, like we said, hard nose, smash mouth, very physical. So it's just one of those things that the, the most physical team is going to win this game. The most physical team is going to win this game. That, that is really what it comes down to. Pitt is very big on the front lines, both offense and defensive line. If Louisville is tougher than Pittsburgh, they win. We'll talk about what needs fixing as we head to the break. Howie's going to tell us about the Louisville Sports Report. Absolutely. Last week we did not have a sports report because of the bye week. This week we do. We, if you want to get it, 502-636-4330. You can also check out the digital edition, LouisvilleSportsNews.com. Have you driven a Ford lately? Well, check out Allstate Ford's pre-owned inventory at AllstateTrucks.com. Large selection of pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. Also, a nice selection of Ford certified pre-owned vehicles. Allstate Ford, on the Watterson at Poplar Level Road. Buying your next VW from Bach and Volkswagen will be a great experience. No games or gimmicks, competitive prices, and a huge inventory make number one Bachman the place to get your Volkswagen. The all-new 2012 Jetta, an IHS top safety pick, is a great vehicle and fun to drive. Or get the sporty all-new 2012 Volkswagen Beetle. It's back and better than ever. Come to number one Bachman Volkswagen today to get your new Volkswagen before someone else does.
Join the club at Sam Swope Auto Group. When you service a vehicle in any Sam Swope dealership, you automatically become a Service VIP Rewards member. You get member pricing on parts and service, lost key return, and emergency roadside assistance. Plus, you can earn points that qualify you for discounts on your next vehicle purchase, up to $2,500. The best part is becoming a member is free. Become a member today at any Sam Swope dealership. Nobody walks away because everybody saves. Allstate Ford, seven-time recipient of Ford Motor Company's President's Award for Customer Satisfaction, with 13 Ford certified service technicians and a best-in-class parts department. Business or personal, we are the truck experts. Allstate Ford, on the Watterson at Poplar Level Road. What needs fixing on the red and blue are you? Brought to you by Doug Jones Home Improvements. Welcome back to the Red and Blue Review and what needs fixing for the cards is offensive line continuity. Regular starter John Miller is out, so Cameron Joyer will get his first collegiate start this Saturday. He played most of the majority of the snaps against Southern Miss, so, and he played really hard too, so I don't think there's going to be too much of a drop off. And yeah, he's got Kepper over there and he's like a rocket scientist on the left angle, so. <laughs> Cupper is like a rocket scientist, so if, if any of the calls get missed or whatever, he can kind of say, hey, this is what you're supposed to do on this play. I think the offensive line should be fine. And we get our first look at uh, Louisville and Kentucky basketball coming up this weekend. We've got Big Blue Madness. Uh, Daryl, any hints about what we should expect to see from this uh, basketball team this year? I want to watch Willie Cauley-Stein. He was yeah. kind of projected as the project. He's okay, maybe. Turns out he may be a lot better than everybody thinks. Howie, give me your thoughts about the team that's returning from its uh, visit to the Final Four. Red-white scrimmage, and apparently Shane Behannon is not on the first team. That's very Really? I know, I know. <laughs> Montrez here, a little motivation there from Rick Pitino. Well, coming up on the, this weekend's show, we're going to be talking about, of course, the football games and really start digging into uh, college basketball, two of the best teams in all of America, right here every week on the Red and Blue Review. The Red and Blue Review has been brought to you by PNC Bank, Allstate Ford Truck Sales, and the Muhammad Ali Center. I remember the moment. I'll never forget that moment. That moment? It was a moment that changed my life. I'd been training with my team for months, and now we had been called up for the first time. The real deal. Wildfires were getting dangerously close to home. At that moment, I got my first taste of just how important the Guard is to my community. See how the Guard can be an important part of your life at NationalGuard.com.